Despite the psychologists that come yearly to school on their request that they just teach us how to build the best relationships, how to make the best choices, how to take the best care of ourselves, and that we can have a party without alcohol, it is pretty safe to say that at least the majority of high school parties include drinking. I'm not saying that every student sitting here has taken a shot. I also have a very, very intelligent friend who happens to be the co-author of this TED Talk that also does not accept any drink from anybody, whether they are a friend or not. And all of us started saying that the reason why she did this was because she couldn't afford the loss of neurons because she was going to be the one that would cure cancer. To clear this out, it is not that cancer is always a death sentence and that it cannot be treated at all. Treatments that exist, however, are also harmful to the human body. It is time to find an alternative way to treat this disease. Recurring chemicals to treat medical flaws has been the center of pharmacology for many, many years which has proven to be effective in controlling the flu, alleviating allergic reactions, and eradicating headaches. Let's imagine a typical scenario that occurs in everyone's daily life. Sick individuals consult doctors so they fix their sore throats, stomach aches, or migraines they're suffering from. Currently, it is pretty easy to take care of the problem. Cross the road, find a pharmacy, and get to tell the dollars, is what the doctor will say, and this will simply fix the patient's illness. However, the issue researchers are facing right now is that as cures have evolved, so I had diseases. This is why our solutions have become extremely severe and even cause secondary damages. And cancer is one of the main evolving conditions of today. And the most frequented approach, chemotherapy, is very aggressive for the terms of the body, both physically and emotionally. When we talk about more permanent or grave medical issues that arise from mainly tissue rupture, tissue degeneration, and cell proliferation, we have to go beyond the use of chemicals. And these medical complications need a more targeted treatment, and chemicals alone won't solve the problem. So what shall we recur? Physics. When you pressure your finger against your skin and release it, the skin will deform and revert back to its original state. Nothing much. Now, what if I told you that if you put the cells under tactile stress, they change their shape? So, you might say, oh, why is this important? Well, acknowledging that the number one rule of chemistry and biology, that structure defines function, function defines structure, we see that if we change the shape of the cell, we can change its function. When this was first discovered, it posed biology a new question. What if we could change this, the function of cells using these touches or physical cues? In fact, cells exhibit the desired responses from, cell, from materials at the nanoscale, 10 to the power of negative 9 meters. They are called nanobiomaterials. Physical cues exerted by these nanobiomaterials promote the idealized responses, such as even cellular regeneration and cell differentiation. And the research classifies this as very effective in vitro on the bench. However, there is great difficulty in the implementation of synthetic materials in vivo in the body. Consequently, we have to take into account the concept of biomimicry, making materials as similar as possible to body, cells, organs, etc. I'm not just talking about the shape and size, but also stiffness, pH, state of matter, etc. The human body, as well as any other living thing, even it's the Earth itself, and ecosystems, tend to regulate itself. This is self-regulation is called homeostasis. And because of this self-regulation, the body tends to alienate implants. Why are so many breast implants ineffective? Because the body rejects them. Since nanobiomaterials materials and other synthetic materials are foreign to the body, they're often rejected. Hence, keeping in mind the concept of biomimicry is important to synthesize nanobiomaterials that suit the body. As researchers continue to explore the power of physical stress by materials, a group of scientists from Yale University engineered nanopillars to have a specific topography at the nanoscale. These structures were made out of a material called bulk metallic glass, a metal with a crystalline atomic structure. Due to the fact that bulk metallic glass is known to have features such as high ductility, low stiffness, and high elasticity, it is classified as biomimetic or friendly to our bodies. Subsequently, testing was done to see if the cells presented a reaction towards them. Skin cells placed in bulk metallic glass nanopillars with 200 nanometer radii turn out to become more round and less stretched and decrease their production of collagen, the protein that makes up most of your skin. The articulate research begged the question if mechanical stimulus affected cells. In light of this discovery, they called the materials nanobiomaterials because of their characteristic of eliciting uncommon responses from cells. And they categorized them into five main types. Nanopatterned surfaces, nanowires and nanofibers, carbon nanotubes, nanoparticles, and 
none of our scaffolds. When you get a wound, your skin tissue deforms. When it gets repaired to form a scar, its topography is not restored to its original position. Therefore, we end up with flawed skin. Now, here comes the role of nanobiomaterials. Recall the example of the round cell that was induced to be round because it was located on a surface of nanopillars. If you were to put these fibroblast skin cells on a flat surface, the, cell, the cells would grow like stretched splatters. They would produce excessive amounts of collagen, and they would, the culture would augment exponentially and form a clump. This is exactly what happens at the cellular level whenever we have a formation of a scar. And the exacerbation of this problem causes the uneven reconstruction of the skin, and we get a scar. However, if we were to put these cells under, on the nanopillar beds, the cells would actually reproduce in a uniform layer of skin. So engineers developed these bandages with nanopillars that upon applying distributed stress, the skin cells would present in the wound, the scar formation would not be excessive. Instead, the skin regenerated evenly, and the scar is less easy to discern. Another interesting use of these materials is with the use of textured gels with different stiffnesses to induce a cellular response. This method is of great interest to scientists because it is likely to become the novel method to handle cancer. A path almost innocuous for our bodies as no toxic substances are involved in the treatment. Have you heard of the orange-like texture in the skin in breasts being a symptom of breast cancer? This exemplifies how the physical conditions of human tissue influence the body at the cellular level. The stiffer orange-like environment acts as a signal to activate proteins such as GTPase and RHO, which are responsible for the go-ahead signals that the cells will receive. And the mo more go-ahead signals that they will receive, the more they will reproduce. If you have not joined the pieces yet, these are cancer factors. And this is a signal of cancer. Yes, the texture of the extracellular matrix, or the space outside of the cells, is able to start a tumor in an organism's body. This is why, by simple means of knowing where the tissue is starting to become adversely stiff, doctors can approach to reverse this and stop the fast proliferating of the cells. There have been experiments to imitate the soft extracellular matrix of non-cancerous cells with gels of lower rigidities that cause it, that cause changes in lower rigidities that cause cells to alter the life cycle upon contact with them. Rigidity, whereupon, brings changes in protein localization gene expression, and ultimately cell behavior. This shows how the physical approach can get to stop the growth of tumor without the need of detrimental substances being implanted in our bloodstream. It is known that physical cues also induce specific roles to take taken by cells. In summation, DNA does not vary. What varies between cell, cell within an organism is the DNA genes and recipes that the cells carry out. Depending on this, we can say a cell is a specialized neuron or heart cell. It is known that softer surfaces make cells develop into neurons. Mid-range rigidity make path for muscle cells, and mildly hard media make path for bone cells. If you're wondering why this is useful, well, think about the disease that destruct specialized cells that can no longer reproduce. How would you replace these cells? This treatment would aid those with muscular dystrophy conditions to develop new specialized muscle cells in a mid-range rigidity habitat and stop the loss of muscular tissue. It was occurred those with nervous systems that are retrogressing due to Alzheimer's or Parkinson's disease simply by inducing blurry potent stem cells from the marrow in the soft media that would get them to study the neuron career and replace those defeated by the disease. Okay, let's get a little technical. How exactly does the cell transmute, transmute these touches into actual cellular signals or responses? The cell membrane contains proteins that upon being applied to force get misshapen and they release enzymatic and phosphorylative proteins that activate others and start a transduction pathway that will end in the shape of the cell. To abridge this explanation, when a force is exerted on the cell, pressure is applied and proteins are released and cause a cascading burst of pathways. Let's think of it like this. It's like squeezing a bottle of ketchup. When you apply force, the sauce will come out, and the effect would be a good tasting hamburger. Likewise, the cells do this to carry out certain functions. The chemicals and proteins being released from the squeeze will cause a series of reactions that will result in cytoskeletal remodeling, which is the rearrangement of the cell's inner scaffoldings that give it its shape and structure and or it could aid in migration throughout the body of cells throughout the body. Studying the extracellular matrix can have as great as an impact as the sequencing of DNA, which has already been effectuated in the past. The extracellular matrix has not been studied, studied extensively, therefore conundrums still remain. There are unlimited outcomes we can elicit from cells. We simply need to tinker with the stimuli we give them. 
We are this close to regenerating neurons, which is a process that has been said to be impossible during the whole history of medicine. And this could cure very afflicting degenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's disease, paraplegia, schizophrenia, etc. The physical way to handle disease is, much, is a much less violent accession to improve a patient's health. Though it is rather an unknown field that needs a lot of our research to truly know what it can bring to the table concerning what is known as the physiology and biology of not only the human body, but that of every living thing. It has the potential to revolutionize what we call as bio, life, literally. 